Welcome back to the Skid Factory. No intro, no worries. Hooking straight in. RB30, Z32. Time for some... Oh, that looks crusty. <laughs> oh, gross. Oh, I don't put fuel everywhere. Oh, how's the stench of stale fuel too? Man. You know what that means, hey? Gus, gut, fuel tank. Gutty's gonna pull that fuel tank out. Hey, while you're doing that stereo, Grummy, about time also, by the way. Mm. We've got the Sony XAV 7 billion going in, the double din, and Gussie wired his patrol, so now he knows, now he's a pro. Oh my god, it's nasty. Is that water in there? Perhaps. How does it, you have to drop the subframe to get the fuel tank out though? Yep. Oh, good one. Damn! Fuel cell. Well, we'll chuck it, we'll chuck it in the back. You don't, need, you don't need the boot space, do you? No. <laughs> You're thinking about it, aren't you? I am. It's probably <laughs> not going to be able to get a tank for it. It looks pretty bad. I think it would slide out through here. If we get rid of all this, maybe lower the subframe down. Mm. Hook in. Good thing you fitted everything up by now, huh? Gussie, yeah. can you reach in the back here for us? Yeah, that one. You've got to be careful not to damage it, but just try and pull it off. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. We got the tank out relatively easy enough with a mate, drop the subframe down, two bolts with the straps and the tank drops straight out. There is tank cleaners on the market which we can clean the tank with. It's filthy in there, it's full of crud and we probably can clean that out but what we're concerned about is both the fuel pump hanger and there's two fuel senders. So the way the fuel tank's shaped, it's got a big hump in the middle for the tail shaft to run through. Now because of that, this pump will suck fuel from one side of the tank, suck it dry and the other side of the tank will still have fuel there. So it's got two fuel senders, one on each side, which are also very crusty. And it's also got this like Venturi pump to supply fuel to the up to, to this side of the tank. So it, the way it works is it's from the return line, it flows into the pump and via this fancy thing here, it actually sucks fuel from that other side of the pump too. This is all crusty as very brittle. So we can possibly clean the tank. We might be able to clean these up but if we break something, then we're in for a world of hurt. So we're already searching marketplace for a tank. Problem being that this is also a short wheelbase, which the long wheelbases are probably more common here in Australia too. So they're both common anyway, but it's hard to find parts for cars that are getting this old. So Al may be resorting to a fuel cell, which I think is a silly idea because it doesn't suit the car, but it may be an option. So we're going to try and clean the tank out as best we can, see how we go. But Part of removing the subframe was dropping off the high cast bar and Al is going to pull that apart and we're going to make up a high cast delete, I believe. If you're like me, you've probably never ever thought about what is inside a high cast rear steering rack and that's probably a reasonable thing also. But I'm pulling this apart just to have a bit of a poke around and see what, what I can do to make it solid or high cast delete. Most people that are, that are smart just buy a bar from the thousands of people that sell them and bolt it in but you know, I'm not that smart so I'm just fiddling with it trying to figure out how to lock it up and you just put it back in as it is so we don't need anything. Um, so I've pulled it to bits, or mostly to bits, 
Uh, it's basically just a big hydraulic ram, so you've got those two bleeders, so it's just in and out, and there's a lot of stuff involved in just actuating that hydraulic ram to move the, the wheels this much. It's not much, it's enough to make it plough into a ditch. It doesn't work very well. So I pulled it apart, I found this inside it. That's the return spring. It's a very meaty piece of return spring. I'm assuming there's another one on this side, but I haven't pulled it completely to bits yet. I haven't worked out how to pull it completely to bits yet. How much does it move? Uh, it had, so these are the limiters. So they screw them in and then lock that. And that's, uh, it moves about that much. So, so four mil or something. This, this is there. So I think you can actually just undo these, screw that right out. Do the lock nut up again. This is from memory from many years ago and it just pushes it against it so I can't move anyway. So I might just do that, but I'm just going to get rid of all the internals of the, like these big giant springs because obviously they don't need to be there anymore. So we'll do that and put it all back together and stick it back in the, in the subframe when, when we've put the fuel tank back in and put the subframe back in, etc. So fun facts about HiCAS, it sucks and get rid of it. We've come up with a bit of a game plan for the fuel tank and it includes using some of this stuff, Metal Rescue. This is a bit of a lifesaver when it comes to restoring some rusty parts. So I've got the fuel sender all wrapped up in this plastic bag. I've just absolutely coated it in this stuff, used the whole tub of it. And basically it's now in this bag and we're gonna let it sit. You can see the color of it over this side. It's just re reacting to all the rusty parts on there. So we're gonna leave it as, as much as possible in this bag. Metal Rescue also have a product that you can soak your parts in. Now, we've only got 10 liters of that. What we were gonna do is try and fill that in the fuel tank, but if I come outside to the paint booth, I'll show you what we've done. We're actually using some hydrochloric acid. You can just get this at Bunnings. People use it to clean your pools and stuff or etch your new shed slab. All we've done is we've used about six liters in this fuel tank here and it is slowly eating away the rust. I think you can see the parts there. This was manky as and it's already looking a whole lot better. So it's been sitting for about an hour now and we're just gonna let it sit for a bit longer. You don't wanna let it sit for too long because this acid can find holes that you don't want to find so it'll eat through the rust and then you'll have a hole in the bottom of your tank so you can let it sit and then we'll give it a good clean out after that once we're done that we can then get the senders sorted so we're going to add some bulkhead fittings to the sender so that we can then adapt that to a fuel pump and then get some uh, an lines around from the fuel tank all the way to the fuel rail Maybe I can use those helper springs in my crown. I need a bit of extra spring rate. <laughs> <sighs> it's crazy. Imagine, imagine your poor power steering pump burning itself to death trying to move that. <laughs> what a stupid idea. What have you done here, donkey? Talk me through it. It's back together already. No, I just removed the, basically pulled the piston seal out, removed them, put it all back together, cut off all the fittings and shit just weld them up and then I'll just use these to to lock it oh so they physically lock against the yeah so you, tie you can just end, you eh? can just wind that out until it's touching that's the, your, the what was the movement was the gap between that and something else I can't remember now but if you lock it up they can't move there's nothing to move it anyway it's just so it doesn't flex when you sort of under load driving it. Just uh, currently taking bets on the Gecko V Huntsman. Oh, the Gecko's bailed out already. Soft. Didn't even take a bet. This guy paints us 
high cast bar that you're never gonna see, but won't paint his block black. You can see it behind the car. You won't see it. What about the engine block that's rusty already? The block already? is not, it, the block is cast iron, it doesn't rust. <laughs> I think we mentioned previously that this is an R2, R230 diff, so it's got a 230 mil crown wheel. That's kind of the biggest passenger car diff that they, that Nissan does. Uh, it's, it might look like a GDR diff because it's got um, that CV joint sort of input and these um, six bolt outputs. Um, the GDR diff's actually an R200 with, with those inputs and outputs to make it stronger, but the, the crown wheel's actually smaller. These have limited ratios, so they're not a great deal of use for, for the majority of people running RBs and that sort of thing, but um, very strong, good LSD. You don't really have to do much with them at all. Just come in presidents and other things too, yeah? Uh, President Q45, whatever, wherever you, what it, wherever you live, um, and 350, 370 Z, a um, bit different to this, but same sort of diff. So um, not not great ratios, they don't go up past 3.7 as far as I'm aware, so if you've got a high revving buzz box like a, uh, you know, SR20 or something that needs to rev its brains out, then they're not much use for that. The metal rescue has done the job. Now that it's not a giant pile of rust, we can actually see what's going on with it. Uh, it's got a reasonable size pump there. Uh, pretty standard sort of setup, except the pump's up high and then it's got like this long tail going down to the, the base of the tank, which is a sort of a shaped like a ramp, really. Uh, so I can reuse that. That should clip onto the bottom of the new pump. That's sort of a standard fitting. This seems okay, I've given it a good clean out. Uh, it's obviously not all that normal. It's got a, like a hose tail on the end of it. Uh, the jet pump, I've tested that with air. It feels like it works, so um, that's all good. Now we'll just pull this pump out and investigate how we're gonna be able to mount the um, 525 Volbo in it. Uh, it has got a pulse dampener here, which I don't need or want but we'll have to cut into this area and try and figure out how to get a, an AN fitting or a bulkhead fitting through it. So let's rip it apart and have a squeeze. Now we got the dash eight fitting welded on and on the other side I've got a uh, 3 8 barb screwed into it. That leads to the uh, Walbro TI525 fuel pump. Uh, I think it's called a EFP500 in Raceworks language. Uh, that's mounted with zip ties and other things because the original pump was 10 times the size and a fifth of the flow. So we just make it work. Um, it's pretty easy in this case because it's got this tail on it that is unchanged. This is the important dimension here is where that sits in your fuel tank. So because that's unchanged, I can put this wherever I want. It's got that sort of plastic tubing that you heat up and press onto it. That works really well because it, it is part of the mounting system. Uh, this is the, the jet pump or the Venturi pump. That's got a little, uh, that's the, where the fuel bleeds off and goes back into the into the bottom of the surge tank part so I've added that back on it was a bit swollen so I've zip tied it on as well zip ties work great in in fuel tanks they're pretty indestructible uh, it all cleaned up really nicely the only thing we've got to do is put a uh, bulkhead uh, power fitting into the top of this plate the original wiring is not good enough for one of these pumps these draw about 18 or 20 amps um, 
as we've seen on the Nexus software. That's a lot, a lot more than what the original pump would have. So we're gonna use one of these. Uh, this FSA 500 or 499, it's just two different sizes of, of um, uh, sort of bolt. So I think I'm using a 499, which is the larger one. 30 amp rated, that's heaps. These are pretty handy to keep hanging around when you're doing stuff like this with these old uh, uh, hangers. You can buy a, a dual pump hanger for these, but they're sort of close to a thousand bucks, so I'm not willing to go that far right now. But we've got Dash 8 line and everything all set up for it, so in the event that I do want more power later on, I can just get one of those hangers and, and uh, upgrade it. So tank back in now and uh, we'll move on from there. Tank came up really nice. Uh, I think would we use like a 60 to one, hang on quick math. Whatever it was. Can you put that thing over the top of me with all the <laughs> mathematical equations? Uh, we use six liters of uh, hydrochloric acid, which you can just buy from a hardware store. It's used to clean concrete and stuff like that and fuel tanks, obviously. Uh, obviously be careful with it. It's acid. Use your right protective equipment, use your brain. Um, mixed with water, it's obviously not going to be too harmful, but it, it really tears off all the crap from inside the tank. So after you've done that, tipped it all out, you've got to be prepared to make sure that everything you've loosened off is gone. So we, we're in there with the gurney flat out, just blowing everything off. We did a t detergent it as well afterwards, just to get everything out of it, and then just to give it a final going over. A lot of access with this because it's got those two holes there so you can get in there and, and make things clean. Um, I then just coated it with uh, like multi-purpose lubricant, CRC, WD-40, whatever you want to call it, just to stop any like rust forming before we uh, fill it up with fuel. So pretty standard for old stuff. Uh, the fuel just breaks down and then all the stuff that's in the fuel composition just goes everywhere and causes a mess. Um, so that's come up good, pretty stoked about that. Uh, we're ready to stick that back in and then we, we can put the sub tank uh, sender back in. Even the senders came up all right, I think they're gonna be okay. This car hasn't got heaps of Ks on it, so once all that grime's been cleaned off it, they actually look pretty good. So that'll go back in. We'll put that in once we get that bulkhead um, uh, pass through. What's the game plan? Just plug it in there. And Got our coolant tank and everything in there. That was done uh, last episode, I guess. And um, one, well, a couple of things I have to plumb up to it is one, the turbos, which is no biggie. And the other is these little um, steam outlets that the plasmine inlet manifolds got on it. Uh, common for uh, like steam, uh, to be a steam trap on an RB engine, which can cause issues with overheating and whatnot. So they've included them there. You can block them if you want, or you can use them like I am. So um, I've screwed in three uh, dash three adapters. Uh, instead of using like flexible line, which is obviously doable, um, but also quite sort of expensive as far as the amount of fittings that I'd need to keep teeing things into a single outlet uh, I'm doing hard line so this is just 3 16th stainless steel brake line or just hard line and I'm using some t-pieces one there and one there and then it will carry on to here with a flexible line so what, how I'm doing it is um, the raceworks brake uh, brake line maker I suppose you'd call it for want of a more intelligent word that's it there anyway. Now these things are actually pretty affordable these days. Um, used to be a very niche sort of product that only a specialist would have. But um, this one in particular, it has your normal brake line sort of operation stuff. But it also has, which is what, 40, 
45 degrees it also has 37 degree flare stuff for um, AN so AN standard is 37 degree on the flare so you pop out that thing there is for brake lines and this you just pop that off swap it 37 degree now you can make up to looks like 5 8 I think five six three eight um, hard lines which is pretty cool uh, so stainless steel is well, obviously looks nice and doesn't crow but it's actually pretty hard to work with you've got to be very careful about the how much force you put on it because it, it, it's not very malleable it tends to split if you if you get to go too hard with it I had a few practice runs and you can see it doesn't take much to split that sucker in half so um, practice makes perfect so I've made one line now I'm moving on to a couple more it's pretty tight in there so you've got to think ahead a little bit about uh, how you make it lengthwise and stuff but same as a brake line just a little bit harder because it's tight and because it's stainless steel let's get stuck in Now Al's got the bleeder set up sorted with the manifold, we can start to run some AN lines for the fuel system. So we've got the fuel tank back in the car, we're going to run a dash 8 line from the tank up to a fuel filter on the rail which I've mounted here. That's just a Raceworks 10 micron filter. From there we're going to run that into the back of the rail and then we're going to come out of the rail, also dash 8, into a Go Fast Bits FXR fuel pressure regulator. So the FXR has, da has dash six ports, the FXD has dash eight ports. Dash eight is way overkill for the power we're gonna be able to make with that one fuel pump. So this FXR is gonna work fine. Fun fact about Go Fast Bits fuel pressure regulators is they've actually got a one-way valve inside the reg and they hold pressure. So on my car I noticed you turn the car off, fuel pressure still sits at 35 pounds. So it's a good thing for first start and cold starts is a good thing. Um, so this is going to be mounted, I think Al wants to do it down on the rail down there somewhere. So somewhere where it's still accessible that it can be adjusted, but also still makes the lines nice and neat to run from the front of the rail down into the rig. And then we're going dash six all the way back down the rail into the fuel tank. So I've done AN lines plenty of times before using Raceworks fittings. One thing to note with the new fittings is, I don't think we've ever mentioned this, but They've actually changed the design now too, so these fittings now take the same size spanner. Instead of having two size spanners, or a shifter, or the vice, dash 8 means dash 8 spanner, whether it's on the nut or the tightening sequence, it's all the same. So well, these are all new flash fittings from Raceworks, and we'll make up some lines using some 200 series Teflon, and then we'll be good to go. Oh, you kinked it, brother. Man, not the bit I care about. Feed him, Mungo. Right there? Yep. Oh. We've got those fuel lines run for the most part. Uh, we're still missing a couple of fittings that we're waiting on, so uh, we'll finish it off when we get those. Uh, we've run the dash eight from the tank through to the rail via a filter for uh, 10 micron, I think Woody said it was, which is the finest. Um, we were considering going through the the bulkhead here. It goes up into the car because it has to, because the the um, outlet from the tank that the that this hose is far bigger than what was on there before, so it will come up into the car and then go back out out of the car here. We were thinking about using bulkhead connectors here, but. I think we, we decided that it's 
that's just more stuff to potentially come undone and leak inside the car, which is not something you want. Uh, a lot of cars do run fuel lines inside the car, so don't, it's not it's not uh, unusual for that. You just don't know about it because they're underneath the carpet and hidden. And my observations of that is, yes, they do do that, but, but they never have a join inside the car. It's always solid. So uh, it's doable, but just probably keep that in mind. Uh, dash 8, Dash 6 return. Uh, that's going to go back into the tank as well. We'll tidy all this up later. We've got uh, the GFB fuel pressure regulator there, which we also haven't hooked up because it's got to join through this Raceworks uh, flex fuel sensor. Uh, these mounts are really awesome, tidies it up nicely. This is so sort of the, the more basic flex fuel sensor. The insides of it are exactly the same as the, the other type that you can get that have got the three bolt holes on them. Uh, and that mount allows you to uh, sort of mount it properly instead of it dangling in the breeze. So that's a good thing, sort of keeps it all compact. The other mounts can end up being about this long but once you put the sort of AN adapters or even hose tail adapters on the end of them so yeah that always comes in handy. Uh, we'll put the rest of the injectors in after we pull the manifold off and um, tidy up the rest of the stuff underneath the inlet manifold. It's not bolted on properly yet. We've got to attempt to fit an RB20 uh, oil outlet with yeah. a does that thing screw off or not? Are you figured that out yet? I hope, I hope it does. <laughs> I mean, it's a 30-something year old block, so uh, we've got to take out the, the three-quarter 20 thread that's poking out of the block for the oil filter and, and replace it with a different type so we can run the uh, RB20 uh, filter mount. I don't know why they... It's just slightly different, but it suits the adapter we've got for the oil cooler better, so we'll attempt that. Cheers to Macca for um, need a replacement. supplying that uh, to us. And if you've got one of those little RB20 uh, oil filter mounts, it's like a little alloy spigot with four bolt holes in it, uh, call me because I need to replace it for Macca. So uh, we'll try and get that out, get that sorted. It'll be easier to do without that manifold over the top, and I don't really want to damage that. It may require heat. Then we can plumb up the oil cooler. And then well, I think we're ready to then move on to actually wiring it. So um, it's the, the fuel tank things have definitely, obviously I, I meant to just pull out that hanger, whack a Walbro on it and put it back in again, but that's not what happened. And if you have a car that's been sitting around for years, you're probably going to find you'll, you'll come up with similar uh, issues because that's what happens. So uh, we got there in the end, but it did take a couple of days extra. So get stuck into wiring hopefully next episode and uh, then move on to trying to get this bad boy fired up. Don't forget to check out the merch store and uh, help us out by buying a shirt or a cap or a whatever other lots of things that we have. Skidfactory.com www. <laughs> Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. You're such a natural Alan. It's so good. <laughs> You've got the HTTP Yes, oh, yeah. slash how will anyone know how to find it? Colon. Colon? Semicolon. Colon. What's that thing? Colon. Colon. It's an unfortunate name, isn't it? Colon. <laughs> <laughs>12 is more than 109, bro. Yeah, whatever. You're a, you're a guy on you're a guy on paper, aren't you? Aircon, do you speak it?
No, because I'm not a pussy. What about lemon squash fridge? Do you speak that? It never has any in it. What about subwoofer? Hey, what do you mean? It's on. It's not in it. It's full. It's got lemon squash. I've got Matzo's ginger beers and Red Bull in there currently. Hipster. Where's your? Sounds like a hipster's fridge. Where's your seven seats? Where's your headrests? I don't need them. Because I'm not a bloody millennial. Where's the odometer that reads more than 1,000 kilometres when you go across the car. I don't need any of those things. Because oh, I'm not a millennial. Look what the cat drags in over here. Almost <laughs> got ya. Little bit of harrop action on your one, you said. Nice, Sebi. Alan doesn't like blowers on one, you said, but he said that he approves of this one. That's because they're normally off of the P6 Commodore, which is rubbish. Okay. So, harrop, yes. Oh, well, it's about three times the size of Calais the Supercharger, no. What are those things called again? Um, M90. M90s, that's it, yeah. Sweet. Sebi just picked this up for a steal. And for this day and age, the Sora is actually doing quite well. Welcome to the after credits. My name's Woody, I'll be your host. Leather interior. Doors heavier than a bloody Cessna. And A340 behind the one you said. Murray's going to correct you about the weight of the Cessna. The, the weight of the Cessna. Murray will be in the comments. Well, how much? You know Murray's a pilot, right? Is Murray a pilot? You've heard Murray's a pilot. Is he a pilot? Murray's, no way. Truly, Murray's told you he's a pilot. Oh, no. Pilots tell you that they're pilots. It's like a vegan. <laughs> Do you approve of the Sora, Alan? Yeah, it's, it's in good nick considering that most of them were completely wrecked about 15 years ago. How many of these have you pulled apart in your time? Oh, I don't think I have stripped any, but I've worked on plenty of them. It used to be everywhere. Point it. Point to it for me. Where's the QR code going to go? Where's the video going to go? <laughs>